surprises with people having problems. We had surprises with a first-time win for Mad Croc Racing, Xavier Milson and Jos Menton being victorious. But this circuit seems to lend itself to the Chevrolet Corvettes. And Spa, as we've been saying over the weekend, John, it is a tremendous venue. You've got the tight last horse hairpin, but the rest of it is fast, it's flowing, but it's pretty daunting for the drivers. Yeah, well, the, the, the Corvette over the years has been developed uh, so, so well. It's always been a, 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 a tough car. Uh, with um, reliability terms, but also with uh, with the speed. But we we go to the the other side of the grid where you've got the Maserati. Same thing here in Spa as one before many times uh, is a, is a seasoned uh, developed car nowadays. But it's at the other end of the grid, so it's going to be interesting how all these things come into play today. Ricardo Zonta is the man that will be on the outside of the front row. He's with Haley. Ricardo, Spa certainly seems to be the track for the Lamborghini. I hope so. We see it now on the jump chip and race. Yes, it was very nice. We finished second. Now we start second. We see if we can, can finish on the podium. It would be very nice for Lambo. Thank you. Let's look at the grid then as the Corvette shares row one with Lamborghini. The second row of the grid is where you find Aston Martin and Maserati with Christopher Nygaard starting in the Aston there. The third row of the grid, Lamborghini and Ford. Nicky Pastorelli alongside Richard Westbrook. And then behind Peter Cox, Lamborghini lines up alongside the Nissan of Michael Krum. To round out the top ten is the Mark VDS Racing Team Ford of Maxime Martin alongside Thomas Engers, Aston Martin. Then you have Enrique Bernoldi's Maserati alongside 52-year-old Alfred Hager in the satellite team car. Aston Martin 13th on the grid, Jonathan Hershey starting, Marcus Paltler is alongside in the 4 GT, then you have Mark Bassang's Lamborghini, which he shares with Christoph Buscher, and Carl Wendlinger, the Swiss racing team in the Nissan. Saeed Giara, a winner here in the 1,000 kilometres in the past, is next, with the Nissan Oliver Gavin's Mad Croc Racing Corvette is next. Then it's Nissan, Warren Hughes, and Ford, Romain Grosjean, who crashed at the end of yesterday's race. 21st on the grid, Fred Makovicki's Aston, and Andrea Bertolini starts from 22nd on the grid, ahead of the Corvette that is in the hands in the first stint of Andrea Piccini. So, the cars start to get, get themselves into formation. Getting slower and slower. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they try, I think what they try and do is try and pack them together. Mm. But as I said, it makes it harder for the drivers because there's no temperature at all. And, of course, we know what happens sometimes at the start. Just ask Peter Cox what happened to Paul Ricard when uh, he felt he was a bit hard done by by being given a penalty for a jump start. So, mm. round five of the FIA GT1 World Championship about to get underway. Out of the bus stop they come. The lights will go green. The fifth round of the championship is go. Then as they accelerate away, who makes a good start? It's going to be the Lamborghini. Ricardo Zonta that makes a demon getaway from the outside of the front rows. They dive up towards La Source for the first time. Tire smoke in the background. They all funnel through the hairpin four wide there. Fantastic. Rubbing mirror to mirror they were there downhill for the first time then riding with the Corvette from the back of the grid way out wide there goes one of the Maseratis but as they head and downhill still three abreast <laughs> look at that and this is going into a roost very quick corner oh that was wonderful driving there that Lamborghini being able to get in front got himself up a couple of positions so you're on board with Maxime Martin, number 40 in the Ford GT, making their way uphill. So it's a Lamborghini 1-2. Look at this, Peter Cox really making progress up onto the tail of Ricardo Zonta. But there in the 11 Corvette, Xavier Marston trying to go around the outside for second place. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Fantastic. Yeah, needed to do that. Needed to get there early because obviously he doesn't want to lose contact with that lead Lamborghini. So a great move there. So the Corvette sandwich between the two Lamborghinis. There's the next Lambo in fourth place as well. Nicky Pastorelli has made a good start, but field file through for the first time and if anything it rather looks as though Andrea Bertolini has lost places and the two yeah. Phoenix racing cars for Corvettes not making the progress they need to. No and also the, su the Sumo Nissan that seems to be sort of down the back as well so it's so not a great start for those guys at the back and it's, it's important for them because they're especially Bertolini it's very very much championship points that he needs to get. They won two qualification races and one championship race, Vita Fern Racing Team, Fort Messalini and Bartels. And you can't even say, yeah, but they've got an hour of racing which to do this because it's an hour sprint. You've got to get on with it straight away. Yeah, it has. And it's, it sounds great that he's actually won those sort of uh, those races. But those races are where you don't get many, many points. It's the ra the second race and this race today where those you get many, many more points. And that's where they haven't quite been able to successfully get that consistently. Did it in Paul Ricard, but they need to do that more often. So the Lamborghini Murcielago leads the way, the six and a half litre car leads the pack at the moment. Ricardo Zonta for Reiter Engineering leading in second place. There, look, is the battle between Xavier Marsons, Mad Croc Racing Corvette, and right with him now is the Peter Cox driven Lamborghini. Now, what progress can he make as they make the run up now towards the bus stop for the first time? Leaders will start to bunch up again and don't rule out that Corvette. Marson a bit busy at the moment trying to defend, but he also wants to attack. Yeah, we'll be very, very cautious, and I think it's a little bit because of these cars need to get that tyre temperature I was talking about earlier on. So there was actually nobody even attempted to overtake. So I think they're all taking it easy, 
once they get those temperatures in that tide, then they can start to push, then they can start to try and overtake. Number two there, Enrique Benoldi turns out of Nassau's hairpin, plunges downhill, trying to keep the Aston Martin at bay because Jonathan Hershey is behind him, and then Thomas Enger running in 11th place. Now, the gap at the end of the opening lap was a second between Zonta and Marsen, but it's a great first lap there by Peter Cox from the fourth row of the grid to get himself up in the mix. That was pretty brave stuff by Peter. Uh, pretty much so, and I think he just put, him in a get, put himself in a great position actually at the start itself, and uh, from that point he was able to, to capitalise on, on that. When we got a car, there's been a bit of obviously contact uh, there's a car just pulling in the pits. It's one of the, it's the Nissan, I think it's the Swiss Nissan, I think. As on track in. there, look, we've got another shuffle because on the inside through goes Bert Langean to secure the place ahead of Christopher Nygaard. So Maserati stays ahead of Aston Martin. And that is Oliver Gavin who has had a spin. You don't see that very often. Was he helped into it potentially? He rejoins, but that's going to put him at the back of the field. So having said it was a car to watch, we're watching it for the wrong reason. He's had a spin. A sister car up front though is getting closer all the time. And I think it may have been just a spin, I'm not quite sure. Mm. May have been. He doesn't do that very often, does nope. he, Ollie Gavin? That drops him right down to the back of the field. The three leaders, though, now covered by just seven tenths of a second. Let's have another look at this. Yeah, I can't really see. He gets, he gets, spat out very, of the pack. He gets very close to the, the. There's a silver GT40 there. He gets very close to that. Maybe, maybe there was just a tiny bit of contact. There. Could be. Now this is for the lead. Look how close the three leading cars are. Zontra has been caught by Marston, who's taking Peter Cox with him. Peter lapping quicker than anybody else out there at the moment. Down towards Bruxelles they come then through the right hander. Lamborghini Corvette. Lamborghini. Fantastic battle going on and Xavier Marston is trying to attack for the lead and defend for second place. Yeah, and this is where it's interesting because it looks as if Zonta on the first lap or two actually was able to sort of pull that little gap out. Let's hear from one of the local heroes, Bas Linders, with Haley. Bas, Bas, it's not quite the start that you were hoping for. No, no, not really. Uh, Maxim had a good start but then he tried to pass uh, Westbrook for seventh place and he closed the door a little bit. Uh, we didn't actually see the spin but he saw he spun and rejoined but now we are 22nd. So now we have to push like hell to try and come back. Thank you, Bass. Very frustrated. Bass lined us then the car after that spin way, way down the order. And this, this, this is, is it, what I happened. Think. Yeah. I see down the inside. Got a bit squeezed, bit of contact. And around she goes. Richard Westbrook, of course, new to the championship, new to the Ford GT. But this is the lead battle. Lamborghini Corvette, Lamborghini. And don't forget, we've not yet had a win this year for Lamborghini. So is this the day? Looks pretty good at the moment. Ricardo Zonta, we know, is fast. And Frank Heckler, who will take the car over, has proved to be a bit of a revelation in the championship this year, moving up from the German GT3 championship. Xavier Marsen still second. And then Peter Cox there in third. And oh dear, oh dear, it gets worse this weekend for Corvette. Andrea Piccini parked by the side of the road. The car retired early yesterday with a puncture. And Andrea Piccini from the back row of the I'm afraid on lap four is a retirement at Eau Rouge. Xavier Marsen really impressive out of Blanchimont because he gets mm. the car right onto the tail of Zonta's Lamborghini under braking. So the Corvette taking the battle now to the Lamborghini as they come out of the bus stop, up through the gears, over the start and finish line. The seven litre Corvette rumbles its way past. Now Peter, Peter Cox doing the fastest yep. lap still. So pace wise, you know, Peter's very, very good. He's in a the position, there's no big rush, another spin in the background. It's another Ford, isn't it? it I is. think that's the other VDS racing car. It is, I'm afraid. Marcus Paltler at the wheel of it. So he's going to get himself. Let's have a look. Oh, contact there from the Aston Martin. Gives him a nudge at the back. Round he goes. And a shame because obviously he's got to try and repass all those cars. It's going to make it very hard for him. But as we go down to the the Kemmel straight up towards Lacoum, you know, he's, he's got to try and slipstream this Lamborghini and give himself a chance to pull out. He's not quite close enough. You've really got to get through a Rouge uh, perfectly. And if you get that perfectness, like we have here, the, the uh, Maserati being able to try and pass on the outside because he went through uh, a Rouge that little bit better. But you've just got to get on the inside, not the outside. That's the battle for sixth place you're looking at. Richard Westbrook's Ford ahead of Enrique Benoldi in the Maserati. Of course, Richard new to the car. He's no stranger to Spa, but he's still adapting to this car as the lead battle at the start of the lap was just half a second between the two of them. And Peter Cox keeping in touch, even if he's not trying to find a way past the Corvette, just waiting to see what develops ahead. There in fourth place, Nicky Pastorelli's Lamborghini, and then Bert Langin is still fifth, but that great battle for sixth position, Westbrook versus Bernoldi, Ford ahead of Maserati, downhill they come, and of course they're pretty close also to the back there look of the Maserati MC12 of Bert Langin. He drives for the Triple H Team Hager Sports squad, so you've got Maserati, Ford, Maserati, with the Vitaphone Racing Team car of Enrique Bernoldi, desperate to try to make places here. Miguel Ramos will take that car over. Richard Westbrook, who's driving the Ford, sharing with Thomas Much. The three leaders head towards us as they come out of the pith path, down towards the Paul Frere corner. But this look here is this fight between the Maserati of Bert Langer and Richard Westbrook, a bit like Xavier Marston, trying to attack, trying to defend.